Hey everybody, it's Maxine here. It's been forever that I've filmed the video for you guys because of the whole hiatus and everything. I'm going to be doing Maxine's Disney Tips Part 2 and this time it is going to be transportation. So both getting to and from and around Walt Disney World Resort. So first is getting there. So you have a couple choices. You could drive down there. Obviously, that whole thing depends on the, the distance between you and Disney. If you live closer, like if you live in a southern state or in Florida, or just in that general area, it's obviously easier to drive than, say, if you live either more north or more west or both. Since we live in New Jersey, it would take about a day or so to drive, including with stops. You have to consider gas and food and everything, so I've never actually driven down, well I don't have a license yet, so there's that too. But, I, and of course the other option is flying down from whatever airport. Obviously flying for some people like those who live overseas, or for those who take way too long like those on the west coast, flying is the best option. And you know, just use your preferred airline, etc. I always use JetBlue because it tends to be a pretty good deal. You and I've always had good flights with them, so, yeah. I usually tend to take a plane, but it all depends on you, where you live, and what you, and what you prefer. So, the next thing is, once you get to Orlando, how do you get to Disney World? If you, fl if you flew. Obviously, if you, you've driven, you don't need to worry. You have a car with you. You don't have to worry about rentals or anything. Now, if you do fly to Orlando International Airport, which is where I always fly, there's a couple options. You could either rent a car, which, you know, obviously you have to be 25 or older if you're in the United States. I am, I am 25, but once again, I don't have a license, so I've never been able to rent a car. So I always, so, and I've never driven there either, so what I always do is, I use Disney's Magical Express. Basically, it is a free bus service from Orlando International Airport to your resort hotel. This is only if you're staying on site, though. So if you are staying off site, I'll talk about resorts next time. If you're not staying on Disney property, then you have to use come up with your own transportation, whether that's taking your own car if you're driving, or using some sort of rental. So this is assuming you're staying on site. It is a bus that takes you from, and also is only from Inter Orlando International. So if you're going into a different airport, you obviously cannot use it. And, it, and of course, when you go, go back to the airport for your flight home, it takes you back. It is, it also, there's a couple options you can do with your luggage. You can, you they do send you these yellow luggage tags about a month before you go that you can attach to your luggage. If you put those on before you go into check-in, you won't have to worry about baggage claim when you go to Disney. They'll bring it to the hotel for you. However, you may have to wait a little while after you already arrive before you, it actually gets to your room. It, it tends to vary, but if you want it right away, you can always put the luggage, you can always go to baggage claim after your flight and put your luggage on the bus and you'll have it immediately, but you'll still have to go through baggage claim. And of course, you still have to go through baggage claim on your flight back. So, there are a lot of benefits to either. Obviously, with renting a car, you have some more freedom with, you know, when you can get there and what you can do and you can go off-site and such. But yeah, overall, I tend to do, I always have done Magical Express and have never had any issues. So, now you're at Disney World. How do you get around if you don't have a rental car? Well, thankfully, Disney World has free transportation all around the parks, resorts, etc. There are a few different types of transportation. The ones you'll see the most are the buses. They go from each Disney World-owned resort to the parks and Disney Springs and such and such. I always use the buses. They are excellent. They're air-conditioned. You know, they play Disney music, they're pretty great. And they tend to run every 20 minutes or so, depending. And also, you, you gotta take in time. For instance, if you're staying at one of the value resorts by, say, Animal Kingdom, 
it's going to take longer to get to Magic Kingdom than, say, Animal Kingdom or Hollywood Studios. So you got to make sure you get to your bus stops on time to make sure you get to your destination in the time you want it to. Always make sure to check, like, with people how long it would take for X bus to get to X park, etc., etc. And they tend to run pretty early, about a couple little hours ish before the park opens, to you know, pretty relatively late after the parks close. Just as long as you know, just within reason. Always check park hours on my Disney experience to make sure. And of course, if there's a morning extra magic hour, once again, that is when the park opens an hour early. It's only for resort guests. Obviously, the buses will run an hour early. There's also boats. There are a couple different times. There is water taxis, fr friendship boats, and others. They tend to run from more from um, deluxe resorts. There, I can list a few of them. There is um, the Wilderness Lodge, which is by Magic Kingdom. There's a, a boat you can take to the Magic Kingdom. There's also a few resorts around Disney Springs, which is the basically the shopping. Like it's basically like a huge outdoor Disney mall, in a way. It has entertainment, food, shopping, etc. Like from say Port Orleans Resort, which I stayed at, you can take a boat to down uh, to Disney Springs. It used to be called Downtown Disney. You can also take one from the other resorts around that area, such as Saratoga Springs and Old Key West. And you can also take some boats in other areas, such as one with the Hollywood Studios slash Epcot area resorts. For instance, one time on my 2013 trip, I took a boat from Hollywood Studios to the Epcot resort area. Yeah, and the boats tend to be, I've only gone on the boats once, but it's the, from what I heard, they, they generally tend to be pretty good. They run about around the same schedule as the buses. And then of course is the famous Disney monorail. So there are only a few different routes that the monorails take. The first that I'm going to mention is the resort loop. There are three, three deluxe resorts around the Magic Kingdom that the monorail goes on, which are in order going from Magic Kingdom. The Contemporary Resort, the Polynesian Village, the Polynesian Village Resort, and the Grand Floridian Resort. And so, but in between the Contemporary and the Polynesian is the Ticket Transportation and Ticket Center. What is wrong with me? <laughs> it is a place where you can, hop, you know, of course, hop the monorail, you can get tickets, you can basically, also if you are parking, if you're using a car, and just so you know, Another benefit to using Disney transportation, Disney parking, except at your own resort, is pretty ex pretty expensive. But you take a tram from the parking lot to the to the transportation and ticket center, and then you take a monorail to the Magic Kingdom. And there's also a monorail that goes from the transportation and ticket center, or TTC for short, to Epcot and back. So you can, if you want to park hop, you can go to the Magic Kingdom and then. Take the monorail on the resort loop to the TTC and then take another monorail to Epcot. The monorails are pretty great. Uh, I recommend just trying them just to visit the Magic Kingdom area resorts if you're taking like a midday break, etc. But yeah, the monorails otherwise don't really go anywhere else, but they're still pretty fun to check out. There are a bunch of pros and cons overall of different transportation options. I've always done the buses and, you know, just de uh, generally all Disney transportation over the years and found basically no problems. One other thing I should mention about the buses, if you're staying at, say, the All-Star Resorts, sometimes they share up, the three of them share a bus, so make sure to keep that in mind. I've stayed at All-Star Music before for my 2013 trip, and they did share buses a couple times, usually just in the morning, though, when it was less crowded, so either way, it shouldn't be an issue. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope that you learn something if you're going to Disney in the future. Next time on this, in the series, I'm going to be covering the, all the different resort hotels that Disney has to offer that are on property and owned by Disney. There are, are actually some ho resort hotels on Disney property that are not actually owned by Disney, such as the Swan and Dolphin and some of the Disney Springs hotels. But anyway, that's for the next video. So that will be all for this video. Bye!